What's up guys, Phil here from Red Eye Gaming and today I'm bringing you the updated version of the C6R, the GT2 Corvette for R-Factor 2. Um, as you see there were some shenanigans on the formation lap so we started like way back and I had to wait even though there was like a green flag I had to wait because there was a yellow flag in my sector. Yeah, so we're like way back. Anyway, first things first, you have to look, watch this block this guy pulls. Like, I was so impressed that he actually moved to the inside and blocked for his position. I mean, it wasn't like a block in terms of, like, it was illegal or anything. I was just, I just had to, I had to comment on that. I mean, that was, that was so great just to watch, like, the AI actually know where you are and have them react to you and where you are on the track and, you know, not give up the position. Um, so this video is not about our factory 2's AI, but I just wanted to commentate on that. Uh, other thing, uh, this car is a freaking beast of a car. Uh, it has, a, this version has about 470 horsepower, um, and lots and lots and lots of torque. Uh, definitely seems to be good for short shifting, uh, just because you, there's so much torque in it, it really helps you kind of with uh, traction, especially in some of the slower corners. Um, I probably should have taken some more time here and set up my gear ratios a lot better. Would have probably helped me out a lot more, but I didn't do that, so my gear ratios are way off. Um, but yeah, this uh, new update here for the C6R. It's, you know, I'm actually, <laughs> the best way I can put it is like, I'm actually willing to take this thing out, drive it, and race it now. Um, personally, I had the um, United Racing Designs EGT mod, and I liked the C6 from that way better than this before it was updated, so I just, I haven't even used this car in probably since I had the demo for R Factor 2, which was, you know, like, I believe. I bought our factor two like last November, so I haven't even driven this car in almost a year, and I just I never really liked it. Um, I guess I never really gelled with it. I, it just it never it just felt like something was off. Uh, but with the updated version, I it's more drivable at least from my standpoint. It it seems to you can tell like what's going on and makes sense you know they added the contact patch model which is huge you know it really makes a big difference in the car I did find that the rear end was like very very oversteery but I think once again that might be due to the fact that it does have 470 horsepower and you know loads and loads of torque I think it's 585 pounds of torque but not 100% on that uh, there also is two versions of this car available. There is the 2009 engine, which I'm running, which has more torque but a little bit less horsepower. And the 2010, which I didn't try out, but it has a little bit more horsepower but actually less torque. So the uh, short sh shifting probably wouldn't work quite as well there. Uh, but I am very happy that they did update this car because I think, you know, this could be a good car to use. I mean, I had a good time racing it. Um, I actually had a much, much better race at Sebring. Um, you know, I'm talking like last lap battle for the podium. It was wonderful. Like, I was happy that I recorded that race just so I could put it up because it was a really good race. And then there was a problem with the file. And I really couldn't do anything with it. It was just, you know, corrupted, and I, you know, I just, and it was something. It's something with, for with the editing and software I use. I, I just like couldn't record it. Sebring. I kept getting like I tried to do multiple takes, and it kept doing the same thing. Uh, but as soon as I came to a different track, it worked, which was really odd. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't figure out the issue, and I wanted to get this update out there. But so we, we, I went to Mid Ohio, and uh, this car is a handful, especially at Mid Ohio with all the uh, hills and just the, the tight corners. And yeah, this is uh, it's a handful here at Mid Ohio, that's for sure. 
It was fun though, I still had a lot of fun. So now I just want to let you guys listen to the sounds for a little bit. Uh, I think it sounds pretty good. I, I do think that the external sounds sound really cool. Like if you listen to the sounds on a replay, they sound awesome. The backfires, uh, they sound really good. But the, I'll just let you listen to the internal onboard sounds really cool. What it sounds like when you drive. Alright, so the sounds of those, that uh, V8 doesn't sound too shabby. Uh, so, a little bit more about the car. Um, the one thing I did see, I wouldn't say I had a problem with, I think it's more driver error, but it's really easy to overdrive these cars. Um, it's very easy, you know, just to, because you, at least if you're like me, you're always like, oh, the later I brake, the better. I mean, obviously that's not always the case, but, you know, for the most part, if you can brake and still make the turn and hit your apex, yes. But it is very easy to try to brake too late in these cars and not make it. So believe it or not, you know, as I made a bunch of mistakes and overdrove the corners and my tires, they probably just got really overheated. I didn't check the temperature of them. Um, but I actually, you know, I did pay for that. You know, towards the end of the race, I had a lot of problems. Uh, it really felt like I guess my tires were either overheated or they were showing signs of wear. Um, probably a little bit of both, um, but it really did show, you, you know, that, you know, driving like a maniac and, and not, you know, preserving your tires, even in a short race like this could, you know, potentially change the outcome of the race, you know, so this could be something that's pretty big for online, you know, so, you know, somebody who is going to be really aggressive and try to get in front of someone in the beginning of the race, it might be better to just let them go and have more patience than them and see if they'll just, you know, burn out their tires before, you know, you finish the race. Um, obviously, that's assuming that you guys are similar on pace and whatnot, but it could definitely add a whole new effect into, you know, some of the online racing. Uh, even, or even just, you know, offline against AI, uh, I don't know how much the wear necessarily affects the AI. I haven't really tested that in any kind of longer races or anything. It's still interesting, you know, you really do have to preserve and manage your tires to a certain extent or you'll just, you know, overheat them and then they have no grip. And lastly, I want to talk about here is, uh, being this is a GT2 car, there is no ABS or traction control. 
Um, so it is a little bit harder to, you know, to drive than a car with uh, either of those two. It makes it a little bit more fun because there is always that uh, chance that you're going to spin it exiting or that you're going to, you know, snag a wheel going into a corner. And uh, especially in this game, you know, you really do get punished for lockups because you get, you really do get the vibration and it's really annoying. And it's it also, I feel like they, they have a lot less grip. Maybe not like a lot less grip, but it, it definitely influences the tire. You know, when you have a big lockup, it, you really do notice, and it, it really just kind of, it almost like changes how you have to race, and it, it, it really is just, it's kind of a pain, like it is a punishment for, you know, locking up your tires, which you're not supposed to do anyway. Uh, but just something worth mentioning, you know, that these cars are relatively easy to lock the wheels. Uh, it's more, it's not like a full-on lockup like you'll see with um, other race cars. It's more like you'll snag, especially like the inside wheel as you start turning in. Uh, you'll feel it like catch a little bit. Um, but, you know, doing that over the course of a stint, you know, where you snag an inside wheel here and then there, you know, or every other corner if you're doing it, you know, it's it can become very bad for you very quickly. You know, and you're gonna have a lot of vibration. It's honestly really just not fun, but it is true to, uh, you know, real life. And I think it's a really cool feature, you know, I, I don't know of any other games that currently have anything like it, you know, where you, when you, you know, walk up and really, and I think I managed to do it right here. Uh, yeah, this guy slowed down like a lot more than I thought he was going to, and uh, it, it, I did have to kind of slam on the brakes more than I wanted to and lock the uh, wheels up. And for the rest of this race, you know, I had to drive around with vibration in my wheel because I could not <coughs> uh, stop in time uh, without locking my wheels. Up. You know, then I had to pay the price because, like, and the rest of this, you know, uh, race was just really weird, and the wheel, the wheel felt really weird. Um, not to the point that it was like something was wrong, just like you knew, I knew that I had locked the wheel and had a really big flat spot on the wheel, which I think is really cool to see in video games. Um, hopefully, that'll become more common. I believe GameStop Car is working on that. Um, so it's in the process, but it's not quite there yet. Alright guys, um, that's going to do it for this video. Uh, if you like this video, make sure to like, leave a comment, subscribe, so you can uh, stay up to date with this channel. Um, also, if you have R-Factor 2, go download this car. It's free. Give it a shot. Uh, I do think it's much improved over the previous version of the car. Um, so for the rest of the video, I'll just let you guys listen to the uh, V8s going around in Ohio. Until next time, see you guys later.